And joining us right now from the game broadcast is Jim Palmer, Hall of Famer, as well as Ben McDonald. Gentlemen, a tough one for the home team tonight. Tough to win when you only score one. Yeah. You know, like, you know, uh, four for 16 and runners in scoring position yesterday. A lot of opportunities. 0 for 5 uh, tonight. So, again, like you said, you know, we look at the Yankees, what, 807 runs, lead the American League in runs. They hit a bunch of home runs, close to, what, 270 home runs, and you think them just power, but their pitching is superb, and uh, you saw it. So. Yeah. And Hicks really got it going. One to one ball game, two out, and. Aaron Hicks picks up his first base hit of the year and that would tie the game in the fourth inning a one to one game Orioles got out early got one in the first inning and then in the fifth inning the rookie 21 year old Volpe goes off the wall and boy when this ball kicked away from Taron Vava right there Mullins gets it in with both leading off the inning so it's a lead off triple in the fifth inning. And then of course uh, you'd also have a double by LeMayu sacrifice fly and then Stanton hits a real big fly about 435 feet over the great wall of Baltimore four to one and uh, again not a lot of scoring opportunities yeah. uh, you know they get Johnny Brito looks like he's going to struggle as we talked about in the game looks like maybe the game could have gotten out of hand couple of walks a couple of base hits the Orioles get a run but that's all they get early on yeah and it was weird game because the first 17 Orioles accepted to the plate nobody struck out everybody put the ball in play and made a little bit of noise but the final 18 batters that came to the plate for the Orioles eight strikeouts at the Yankee bullpen showed you why last year it was one of the top bullpens and it continues to be one of the top bullpens in baseball get back to what you said Jim we, we think of the Yankees the Bronx Bombers home runs but yeah we saw the Stanton home run but there were other clutch hits as well. These guys are professional hitters, and I know that's a term overused sometimes, but they are. Yeah, I, well, that, that's true. And, you know, last year they hit about, what, 243, I think, with runners in scoring position, which is about maybe a little couple of points lower than the league average. So what was impressive to me was really, uh, you know, Johnny Brito, because this is a young guy. You know, if 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 I'm Clark Schmidt, I'm a little worried about my job because this guy throws strikes. He does everything you want to do as a starting pitcher. And like we saw, you know, Wong back in 2006 and 7 won 18 and 19 games. Now I don't know if he'll win that many, but it looks to me that he's going to throw a lot of strikes and give you a chance to win. And that's what the Yankees want or any team wants from their starting pitcher. Yeah, I mean. This is only a second big league start second big league start and he gives up one in the first inning and the first two guys get base hits but then after that he figured out a way to minimize the damage in the first then he starts stacking up the zeros he really got the change up going the fastball was better velocity wise than we thought it was going to be he was up to 97 with his fastball so yeah a bright future for him for sure and, well, and speaking of me uh, speaking of uh, uh, an uptick in velocity Cole Irvin a little uncharacteristically you know I mean first start you know you get traded you come to your, uh, you know, to your new team, and he, he doesn't usually throw 93 to 95. But again, the walks, and yeah. that's really what led to them getting back into the game. You talked about, but he threw the ball right by some guys, and then made some nice plays. Turns a double play right here. Practices in spring training, maybe a little bit more gracefully than that. But he had a real good fastball, but walks got him in trouble. Yeah, I mean, those four walks tied a career high for him. He's just not a guy that typically gives out free bases, but for whatever reason. You know, struggled a little bit with his command and left some balls out over the plate. He got behind in some counts a little bit, too. And that's kind of been the story for the Orioles starters in a lot of ways is they're not quite pitching like they did last year. And it's been able to eliminate the big innings and stay away from the big innings. But, you know, Austin Voth was kind of in the same boat tonight, too, where he threw some really good and he flashed it for a while. But too many balls in the middle part of the plate. And this lineup for the Yankees is one of the best in baseball. You know, there was some celebration that was pre pregame. Hyde and Urias acknowledged for what they did last year. Yeah, well. Brandon Hyde was I had him as my manager of the year but you know Terry Francona who's probably going to go to the Hall of Fame he was uh, and then Urias he wins his first gold glove and we saw it yesterday he flashed it Orioles yeah. got in trouble he turned a double play and then uh, Baker struck out you know the, the Yankees looked like they're going to tie that game so you got to be really proud I was lucky enough to win four of them when Jim Cott got he won 16 in a row he got traded to the National League otherwise you're never going to win it so <laughs> so Ramon had a terrific year Golden Glove. I told him in spring training, you kind of walk with a glitter now. And he got the glove. Well, he today. deserved it. I mean, he was <laughs> better than anybody last year at he third was. base. He was. Absolutely. Fellas, we got to do it all over again. Get some rest. I'll see you tomorrow. A little day baseball.